Okay. Welcome. As you join the broadcast, please indicate whether you can see and can also hear clearly. This is the second part because of technical difficulties, so we're going to see whether this one is better than the previous. So please indicate whether the sound is back, the audio quality is good, and we can therefore proceed. I hope that you can hear me clearly this time around. Good now. Excellent. So, blame that on, Sh on Shamario. Technology doesn't always work the way you want it to. Welcome. I'll wait for some of you to get back, only because I know we're in, in the middle of a thought. So, I will wait. I'll give you a few seconds to join. Um, you can share with someone, tag them, share with them so they will know that we're here. We are on this part two of the, of the broadcast. Praise be to Yahweh. It's clear. Good. I'm so glad that it is. And it would not happen again. <laughs> Thank you. We're still speaking to Yahweh's holy people. Apostles say, cry you here. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Glory be to Yahweh, Most Holy One. Holy and worthy. Good. So we give them a moment to join. Give them an opportunity to be here with us so that those who are on, on part one, the previous broadcast can be here and receive that which we are speaking to. <laughs> Sister Nat, you, right, so we have to, the first not to answer Sister Nat, can be here. Thank you, no, no, thank you that the audio is clear. Okay then, so the others will join and pick up. So verse two speaks to who are supposed to follow these laws. It is Deuteronomy chapter six, we're in verse number two. The laws, commandments, rules were given so that Israel would fear Yahweh and observe all his regulations and commandments. You, your child, and your grandchild, all of Israel were to fear Yahweh and to observe his instructions. So I was saying that imagine two people are saved, the husband and the wife, they're both saved. But their children are allowed to conduct themselves as though, as though they are demons. Holy standards are to be established in your house. Holy standards are to be set in your home. Let me speak to the fathers as a man, as a male. As a father, holy standards must be set in your house. You may not agree with me. I don't care whether you do. You have the authority in your house as a man. And this way I'm telling you some your marriage is going to go way off the cliff. Some of you, as Yahweh lives, your wife is only okay with you when you treat with your children according to her standards, not Yahweh's. Some of you wives, you don't want your husband to train your children according to Yahweh's standard. You want him to function according to your standards. I'm saying to every young man, every son, every male, young or old, set holy standards for your house holy standards meaning the standards are different from the world I love my children and I don't have to say that once or twice or thrice they know that I do but they also hear me say all of them that if you cannot if you cannot abide by the standards and the codes established in my house I will kick you out of it Shekinah is 17 and she'll be put out of my house if she can't respect 
and abide by the codes that are in here. I am not playing with that because the book is clear. And we go somewhere with this today with some of y'all. The book is clear. This may give some of you a heart attack, but don't blame me. Yahweh said to Israel, Yahweh said to Israel, He said to them, the, Listen, if you have rebellious son, listen to what he said. Through the same servant Moshe, take him to the elders of the gate. Listen to what he said. Tell the elders of the gate, I have a son who is stiff necked and rebellious. He doesn't listen to me, nor does he listen to his mother. Listen to what Yahweh said. The elders, this is an instruction now, you all, you all talk the spirit of truth. If you have the spirit of truth and you are a holy person, then all truth is accepted by you. Not the truth that not, you don't say, but the, oh, not my child. Hence, that doesn't apply to me. Yahweh said that once you do that, the elders of the city shall have that young man stoned to death so that they would not be disbehaving in Israel. Do you see why Yahweh said he must stone the rebel to death? Not because the rebel was, was bad for the house. Rebellion is cancerous. I want to share it with every parent on this broadcast. Once you discern in a child rebellion, they poison every other sibling. So you could keep them around you. You could keep them around you and see what happens to your whole household. Now some of you don't have children who rebel. They just, they just like to argue sometimes and, 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 and are strong-willed. That's a different thing. I'm talking about rebellion in the context that they recognize your authority and would do everything in their power to undermine it and fight it. That's a rebel. When they would go to the end of the world to ensure that they don't have to respect and value your authority. I will kick you out. You have no... Listen, and I'm not kicking you out with your stuff. Because I don't know where some of your parents get that from. You live in my house empty-handed. Out. Because everything you got came from as a benefit for, my, for, for, for me. Outside. And I say again, I'm, I just say I love my children for the sake of your understanding me. The point I'm making. I don't... What? As a father, and let me tell you young men why, as a man, if your wife refuses for you to have that code in your house, she is undermining your authority. And you live long enough to understand what I say to you. If any one of your young wives who go, daddy, dad, 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 no, 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 let me make it clear to you. If ever you hear what I say today, and you seek to challenge your husband's authority, you are undermining his role in this house. You are not an asset. You are a liability to his, his function as a father. Don't play with them. A rebellious child, and please hear me clearly, a rebellious child doesn't challenge your instruction. They challenge your authority. And you need to know the difference because it's subtle. A child may disagree with your instruction, but they never challenge your authority. So they speak to you in a manner that makes you know, this child doesn't, doesn't, ac doesn't really accept what I'm saying. That's different. A rebellious child does not challenge your instructions. They challenge your authority. You must not have authority over them. That's their position. They recognize who you are and then they seek to challenge that. And you have mothers who say you fill with the spirit of truth and you allowing your child to undermine their father's authority, I'll put you out too.
I shall not live with a woman. I told her this for years because I don't teach my sons to do what they wouldn't do. I would never live with a woman who teaches my children to dishonor me. The day Senator Alita London ever teach my children to dishonor me, it is over. Some of you don't understand the destruction that lies in a woman who teaches her children to dishonor a godly father. And some of you men sit in your houses like little wimps because you're afraid. You can't stand because you know you could see the end right here. You could see that if I only take this position here, we're in trouble. So you back off. Since I say to you, you are afraid that you won't have sex because you got you 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 suddenly score. You know that you're not as lucky. So you, you got one now, and you have to hold on because getting another woman be the hardest thing for you to do. That's what you, you process. So you getting this here, man. I'm, I'm as well live with this because after all, I have to get 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 some relief. You stay right there. And some, so many. Shalom, Mother Christian, Sister Corey. So many, so many, so many of y'all, so many of you are, are, are thinking that a child who comes to you, who comes to you softly is not a rebel. And a child who doesn't shout at you is not a rebel because rebel feels a tone. Rebellion feels in, is in a tone, not a lifestyle. But whatever counsel you give to them, they challenge it. If you say this is not to be done, they challenge that. They fight that. More than that, they see in you the authority and then would make you clearly understand that I'm not going to abide by that. Oh my goodness, my father's type. This is time, a time reminder of the, of the need for us to regard highly the authorities that Yahweh has pay, placed over us. If we disregard that authority, we disregard who is sent him or her. That's it, Daddy. That's what Yeshua said. As plain as day. Do not play with rebellion. Don't play with rebellion. I have never, I have never looked at my father or my mother, especially my father, and think in my mind that I have authority to contend with what he's saying and to challenge him in terms of who he is. Never have I done that. Never have I done it. And therefore, there's no child in my house who can try that. None. My rule is simple. You can disagree with me, but disagree with honor. <laughs> disagree with me. No problem. But disagree with honor. And you disagree with an opinion. Sometimes. Not an instruction. Does it night I know you made a decision? And one with in wisdom too. A rebellious child will seek to form an army in your house. To create an army to fight you. Because what they do is, once they poison the others, they look back, and then everybody will say, you the problem. Do you understand what I'm telling you? They would, they would poison the other siblings, and go out your house to poison friends, and people who know you, and then turn around to say, you the problem. You the one who's issue, not me. That's what they do. So somebody will try to convince you now to reduce your authority level, so the rebel could come back into the house and function. Well, for whatever reason Yahweh has me here, as a holy person, my rule is simple. If I speak to Shemaria, for example, and she seeks to poison the others to inform them to challenge me, and Regina agrees with her, or Shekinah agrees with her, three of them are out of my house. 
Well, Jesus is already out, but you're not coming back here. You're not even crossing my gate. All three. Any child that I have, I have who agrees with rebellion is out of my house. Because what you're going to do is you're going to benefit from me in some area while you disregard my authority. Out. My last will and testament shall not have your name on it. You shall receive nothing from me. Nothing. Because it comes back to what Yahweh said. Yahweh said to Israel, eliminate the rebel. He didn't say to counsel the rebel. He didn't say to have meetings with the rebel as long as possible to try to convince them to respect you. He said to take the person to the authority. <laughs> Melly, watch me in the corner. Take the rebel to, to the authority figures, who are the elders, and the elders will in struggle, they be killed. That's what Yahweh said. He didn't say that you're going to convert the rebel or treat the rebel differently. You know the child will adjust because they're going through a phase. He never said those things. I submit to all of you on this broadcast, I have never had a phase of rebellion with my father. None of us. No, there are times I may have disagreed with what he said, but it never made me disrespect him or dishonor him. And he gave me the room and the opportunity to express how I felt about the matter. And then the time he said, well, listen, that's your opinion, but it's not going to stand here. And that I respected. But I've hardly had an opportunity in my life I ever thought that I don't agree with my father and should challenge what he said. It is not within me to do it. Because of how highly I value his word. So let's go back to the text. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 2. You, your child, and your grandchild, all of you, generations must respect and fear Yahweh. As long as you live, so that you would have a long life. Shonet said, Apostle, can this be looked at the same with the saints and leaders? Maybe you covered that already and I missed it. Yes. Saints who rebel against me, I don't have anything to do with them. Just know that. I mean, the average person should know that. If I give a saint an instruction that's very clear, and a second, and third, fourth instruction, there may be many. Once you see Yahweh tells me that that person does not respect my authority and value my instruction, I am finished with you. Don't call and ask me to help. Don't call and ask me for counsel. Don't call and ask me to do anything related to trouble because I don't deal with you. I permanently terminate people from my life. Verse 3. Therefore, listen, Israel. Listen, Israel. And take care to obey. Listen to the verbiage. Listen, Israel, and take care to obey so that things will go well with you. It's written in your Bible. Don't follow their ways. We get, get to that stage. Listen, Israel, and take care to obey so that things will go well with you and so that you will increase greatly as Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, promised by giving you a land flowing with milk and honey. What would make them increase? You have to take care to obey. You become increasingly great when you take care. In other words, be deliberate, be so serious about obeying.
אוקיי. We will take me D with this next week as well. But let's go to verse 10. Let's go to verse 10. He says, When Yahweh your God has brought you into the land, he swore to your ancestors, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Look at this. Verse 10. Deuteronomy 6, verse 10. Cities great and prosperous, which you didn't build. Houses full of all sorts of good things, which you didn't fill. Water from cisterns dug out, which you didn't dig. Vineyards and olive trees, which you didn't plant. So they're benefiting without labor. Just obedience. <laughs> and even, and you've eaten your field, verse 12. Then be careful not to forget Yahweh, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, where you lived as slaves. Don't forget your deliverance. Do not forget. What is Apostle Alper, right? Proverbs 13, 18. Poverty and disgrace come to him who ignore instructions. Who ignores instructions. But whoever heeds reproof is honored. It's written in your Bible, right? I told people it's written. They, they're written there. All of, all, of, all of the pages. They're there. Don't forget him. <laughs> Woo. Now look at this. I tell you something over here, things you've never heard in your lifetime, right? This is one right here. So for one, he said, okay, the benefits that you're going to accrue from your obedience will be great. But when you begin to thrive, and I know some of you all now, when you begin to thrive because of obedience, do not forget your God. In essence, do not become so busy. Do not become so 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 wealthy in your thinking that you morph or you change because now you're in a different neighborhood you're in a different environment and as a result of that you can't deal with this this the, you can't be seen interacting with me in this broadcast right here you can't be seen with the saints because this circle is not for you you have to change your kind your circle you have to change who you interact with because you know the the honest decent nice warm neighborly person and you don't want them to hear your, your aggressive apostle preaching so you don't even cast what i say to television anymore because you're in a different neighborhood now oh yes you're in a different neighborhood so you you can't be seen with me you now have to follow the nice jesus people again and you have to interact with people who have got deep words to say but shallow lives to live catch phrases but still holding on to jesus Agree that the Messiah's name is Yeshua, but still hold on to Jesus. You don't want your children to hear an apostle talking about people who are stupid. Because stupid is a bad word. Yet your God called people fools. You don't want me to say people are fools because fool is not what you want your child to say. So your child now has to be cultured into being nice. Do you know how you can do that? Because you do not have the spirit of truth. If you possess the spirit of truth, then your child will know what a fool looks like. Your child will know what a stupid person looks like. Your child will know exactly how to define people because truth defines things accurately. Truth describes things and people accurately. That's why Yeshua called people serpent because he's truth. He called them pigs because it's truth. He called them dogs because it's truth. He called them scorpions because it's truth. He called them children of the devil because it's truth. He called them foolish. Shaul called the Galatian church people stupid. He was talking to the world. He said, you stupid Galatians. He was talking to the saints. But they were, they were ready to go back and follow the law. And he said, you are so foolish. Were you saved by the law? He called those colossal greedy gluttons. He said, you're gluttons. He was talking to the church. But you want your child to have an environment that's different from this one here. So they won't, they, they won't fellowship here. Because this platform is, is too aggressive. You want your children to be here this kind of preaching. So you go and keep your children where they are. 
just don't buzz my phone when your marriage collapses. You're meant to tell you that because I'm telling you exactly what's going to happen to you. Your marriage shall fail because you have turned against your God. He said, you were slaves. In this case, we were slaves to sin. We are now free people, thriving in a land. We are citizens of heaven, that's what we call us. Philippians 3, I think it is 20. We are citizens of the kingdom of heaven. We are now in a different place. We are set in heavenly places in Messiah Yeshua. Therefore, we can't forget our God. If we holy people, holy people don't forget their God. They proclaim his, their God. They proclaim his name. You need to get this one over here. You need to see this next one. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 13. Now let me, let me, let me ask you this question. Have you ever heard people say, and it's actually written, right? That you mustn't swear. Have you ever heard people say that? That you shouldn't swear so they wouldn't go to court and put their hand in the Bible because they're Christian in the Bible, so you must not swear. Have you ever heard that? I want you to, this will shock the boots off of some of you all. Have you ever heard people say, because it's actually written, right? That's what I'm telling you why, why you, if you're not skilled, don't teach, don't read the Bible. Don't even read it. Don't read scripture if you're untrained. And you're not gifted. So they tell you, as a Christian, you mustn't go to church, go to the court and put your hand in any Bible because you're saved. And we say people don't swear because the Bible says don't swear. Let me show you exactly what this here that Yeshua also knew. Deuteronomy 6, verse 13. You are to fear Yahweh your God, serve him, and swear by his name. The instruction is there. Yeshua came to fulfill the law. Ooh. What do my niece say? De Deborah, there's a difference between... I'll change my glasses. The difference between a child rebelling against you, a righteous parent, and a child exhibiting the same rebellious traits you've shown to those who have authority over you. Woohoo! You cannot complain about your rebellious child when you rebellious yourself. Lord have mercy. That is my niece. So, thank you, Deborah. Let's go to the book, Devra. Listen to what he say here. Swear by my name. So I'll close with that. But not yet. Why did he say that? And why did Yeshua come to say now, you mustn't swear? So did Yeshua teach the disciples to break the law? Obviously not. But what did he say? Don't swear by things in the earth, things here, things in heaven, things all over the place. What was he saying to them? The only person by whom you swear is the God who doesn't change. Why? Because if I swear by Yahweh, my fear of Yahweh will not make me lie, will not make me change my oath, will not make me falsely swear and make his name void or empty. That's what he was teaching them. Don't swear by things. I swear my mother's grave. I swear by my father. I swear by my children's life. I swear by my job. I swear by my, by my, my grandpa. I swear by... No, 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 no. He's saying to them, when you swear by the name of your God, the fear of Yahweh will not make you ever break that oath by which you sworn, or to which you sworn. But because some of you all have been trained to treat your name of your God so casually, you swear by his name, even to your spouse when you vex. As Yahweh lives, I promise you, 
that I will never ever do what you say. And then you do what the person said. I don't say, tell me, say, help me, God, as the court. I swear by the name of my God that I, as I stand here, you see, apostles of Christ say, swear my children's life. Yeshua said, don't swear on anything else because why? What the, let me let me tell you. Do you know what's the problem when you do that? What you're doing here is you're saying that, for example, it's apostles of Christ, the life or the, the name or the person or the thing by which you swear is the thing that is of greatest significance highest value and greatest authority see the point so if i say I swear by my father i'm saying to yahweh now that you are less than my father that's what you was telling them don't swear by anything here because you have a problem the ultimate so once a saint gets to a position by the saying listen i commit i swear by my god yahweh all who Yahweh is, the, 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 the Almighty One comes into your mind, into your focus, and you say that in this position here, I swear by Him. You tell me if you could go lying after that and play the fool. Or you don't do what you commit to do. Even if it costs you everything, when you swear by the name Yahweh, it must cost you everything. You don't change your swearing, you don't change what you said because you realize you're losing everything. When you swear by the name of your God, everything is on the line. I want to warn you be careful about how you even say the name Yahweh after today. It is not to be taken casually. Saying Yahweh doesn't make you holy. Be careful about how you attach his name in your conversations. Be very careful. Verse number 14. You are not to follow other gods. Chosen from the gods of the peoples around you. Don't follow other gods. Chosen from among those around you. How you have a Christmas tree in your church, Pastor? Huh? How are you celebrating evergreen or the hope that greenery shall return that's that's what the mistletoe and all these things are about that's what you have the holly for the holly is there to show yes yes we, ha we must have green that's why christmas is green you have these green stuff around you and all these these pine trees fake trees in the church because you you hope that after this winter the sun will come again yahweh never told his people to have any feast at this time of year because the pagans didn't know Yahweh so the pagans used to hope that the sun will appear and that it will become warm again so they can eat hence they took an evergreen tree a part of a tree put it in their house so that it can be a reminder to them that someday the sun will come back is that what Yahweh told you pastor how are you in Guyana or in the Bahamas and have an evergreen Christmas tree in the church. Are you so stupid? You don't have winter. You don't have snow. Your grass outside is green, but you have a green Christmas tree in your house, hoping that some sun will come again. You are an idiot. What is the issue with the saint, therefore, who is comfortable 
in the environment where idols are present. If you find comfort in an environment where idols are present, it's a sign that the spirit of truth is absent from you. And what do I mean by idols are present? I'm not talking about if, if you walk to shop and somebody has an idol in the counter. No. I'm speaking to your functioning efficiently in the homes of people who you know tell you that they know that this is pagan but they'll still do it because Christmas is a time where we share and so you claim to be following my teaching but you are celebrating Christmas on the down low with them because it's time of sharing you follow my teaching and because every year your family would gather and dress in your, in your, in your silly, silly, what do you call it thing? Ugly sweaters. You have ugly sweater night for Christmas tonight. And you follow my teaching. When you have the spirit of truth, holiness is an automatic standard. It's what you are. It's not something you do. It's a standard that you are. You become a holy standard. You become the benchmark of difference in any environment. They know you because you're his child. Are you holy? Are you righteous? Are you pure? Or are you wicked? You are the one who, when the wicked get together, I'm talking about your family members, you are the one who they will highlight as being different and think you're better than everybody else. And the truth is that you are better than everybody else. You are the one. When they are identifying on the job who will do the dirty work, you would not be considered as one who would. You'll be despised, but no, not her. She, she's not going to lie for this company. She would not go and, 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 and lie. Not her. She wouldn't do that. You are the one. He, he they be said about you that you would not be the one to falsely accuse anybody so the company can be saved. You would be called a different person. Your children, if they're not of the fall and they're adults, would know that daddy or mommy is not the person to play with because they're going to definitely tell us no you're not doing that I'm not supporting that Yahweh remains faithful what I find As it passed to me. What I find interesting is this, and this will pop some of your bubbles. Tell me how you are so effective, some of you, at not celebrating Christmas. It's pagan. You don't celebrate Easter because it's pagan. You don't celebrate the first of January because it's pagan. But you follow the ways of the world. Explain that to me. Any trend of the world you follow. The convictions of the heathen are yours. Because in your view, I should not be as aggressive in my teaching so in your view the spirit of truth doesn't teach me how to talk but you don't celebrate Christmas yet you have a view that I shouldn't teach the way I do who opposes righteous teaching you do not celebrate Christmas but you despise spiritual authority. My instructions to go celebrate Christmas. Go on. Don't waste your time because you're not of the fold. 
go. Go to where you fit in best. You don't celebrate Christmas, but you don't follow God's instructions either. You do not celebrate Christmas because it's pagan. That's what you say. I don't do that. It's pagan. But the average style that pops up around you, you want it. Go. Fit in where you belong. Do not torture yourself. Go to where you fit in best. This side of the fence is not for you. As a holy person, you are different in every aspect of your life. Your ethics on the job are different. So you don't tell me don't celebrate Christmas, but you lie in meetings. You don't celebrate Christmas, but you lie in business and you cheat customers. You are not righteous and you are unholy you don't celebrate Easter and all these pagan things but you are unprincipled Okay, Mel said, read my comment. I live with my, that's Mel and Henry. I read my, I live with my aunt. I live with my aunt who went and got herself a Christmas tree and decorated it. I did tell her privately and publicly that I do not celebrate this in no way or form. I'm living there and so scared to even <laughs> look in the corner where it is so I stay in my room. Advise not to leave with this because at the moment I have nowhere else to go. Well, you just said it, man. You have nowhere else to go. And you've made your position clear. It's her house. It's not yours. Hence, in that house, you are seen as a different, the, the one who's different. The tree is, doesn't matter. The tree doesn't, doesn't bother you in terms of what it is. It cannot affect you spiritually. But your position has been established. That's it, Pastor Mel. They would know that you're different. Even in business, people say that you're a different person. The way you conduct yourself, they say you're a different person. Your ethics have to be different. If not, then you're worldly. We don't use the tricks of the world in the church. With that, I thank Yahweh for you all. And I praise Him for His goodness to us as saints. I eagerly look forward to sharing more and more with you. Today's reminder is that you are holy. You're different. May the grace of Yahweh abound to you. And I implore you I implore you, do not speak his name as often as you do and as casually as you do. Stop it. Yahweh is not your familiar God. He's your God to be feared. He's not like Jesus. I must also take this time to thank those of you who give to me, regardless of how sternly, uprightly, 
forcefully, I may speak. You continue to support me and my family. I remain grateful. Sincerely so. Thank you. Your kindness is also a result of your obedience. And for that I say thank you. I am grateful. The kindness you showed to me, the things you give to me to my family, we appreciate them because they help us in terms of our sustenance. Thank you. Do well. And I love you all. Thank you for your comment, Daddy. I read it before. <laughs> and I'm so grateful. 